Hello, Coronation, and welcome to day 58. They're right there. Uh, kind of. There's one little one over there. There is a little one right over there. Hey, Levi. Hey, Levi. So. Hey, let's get it started. Uh, give him an opportunity. Yeah, finally. <laughs> <laughs> He's allowed to talk and he just waits. Um, yesterday was Mother's Day. It was. Um, it was a big day for just moms everywhere and us to be able to honor moms. That's one of the commandments to honor your father and mother. It's right. a pretty big deal. So, uh, right up there with don't murder. So, uh, how, how do you celebrate Mother's Day? What did you do? So, we went out to my brother's house who cooked us up a dinner for the, all the moms in the family, which was really nice. So you didn't get to eat. Well, we let the moms go first, then we ate. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. That was cool. And then we uh, we came back, and my wife, which is the mother to my children, mm -hmm. she wanted to uh, paint the dining room and the living room, and so we worked on that this weekend and finished that project up last night. And she's super excited about it. That's cool. So I think uh, I think that's a that's a win. Well, mama got more. It's true. And my mom, she lives in Ohio, but she was able to stop on her way back from Florida. And so uh, we went and got some blizzards at the Dairy Queen and made some food. Did they turn it upside down I when they gave it to you? I don't remember. I assume they did because that's what they do. Yeah. I wasn't really paying attention. The way you test a blizzard. Pretty much. So uh, I, I want to play a Mother's Day game with you in a little bit. Okay. But for now... Even though it's not Mother's Day? It's like... It's trivia of what just happened. Oh, okay. And I'm sure that it'll well, be Well, you know, I think, great. yeah, I'm the best at trivia. It's always not. Uh, so let's see. Uh, let's, before we do that, though, um, I, I want to make sure we review the memory verse. Okay. Because we're, like, almost mid-month, and I don't want to miss it. Okay, well, let me do the motions. Okay. All right, and then you just repeat after me. Yeah, okay. I'll just repeat after you. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Get okay. okay. All right. Let, let us. Let us. Actually, I did that wrong. Let us. That's later. That emotion's later. So let us. I did it wrong. I was ahead of myself. You guys got to do this with us. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just me and Andrew being crazy. Okay. Let's start over. Okay. Let us. Let us. Let us. Let us. There you go. Let us. I mean, let us. Not become tired, but yawn while you do it. Not become tired. No. No. Oh, become tired. Let us Let not us. become tired of doing. You're going so fast. Not become tired of doing. Thumbs up, good. Thumbs up, good. Yeah. That's weird that the Bible would say thumbs up, good. Oh well, good. Just good. Okay. <laughs> of doing. Of doing. Of doing. Doing good. good. At the right time. At the right time. At the right time. Right. Ah. Uh, <laughs> That's smart. Exactly. At the right time, the right we time. will gather. There's that motion. I just mixed them up. Yeah. Gather. We'll gather up a crop. Gather a crop. Okay. Gather up, yep. up a crop. Just a crop. Sorry. Just gather a crop. Yeah. Gather a crop. Maybe like you're gathering corn or something. You've I never don't really picked corn before. <laughs> this is not how you. Like you're hugging the corn. Uh, I don't. Do you gather any crops like this? Um. Uh, well, that's what we're gonna pretend it is. Okay. So. <laughs> Gather a crop. If we don't, if we don't, give up. Give up. Yeah, it's just like whatever. Yeah, give, up. give up. All right, can we do that from the top real quick? Maybe. Yeah. All right. Let us. Let us. Not. Not become tired. Not become tired of doing. Of doing. Good. Good. At the right time. At the right time. At the right time. We will gather a crop. Gather a crop. If we don't. If we don't. Give up. Give up. And that is Galatians 6 9. Galatians 6 9. Okay, so there's something I want to do with this. Okay. Okay, so I want Should to. Should I be scared? Because. Maybe. Because I might could actually win a game. It's a challenge. You're going to win yeah. a game. First time in Corona Case okay, history. Listen, I but I really need somebody else to help me win. And I know that this guy likes to win. Okay. I challenge Chandler Woodard oh. to send a video to us so that we can use it in chronication of him doing the memory verse. Okay? Oh. And I challenge you to challenge somebody, whoever's video 
that we get first. Ooh, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, so if you pick. So I could pick any kid. Any kid. Or adult. Sure, why not? I'm going with the kid. Yeah, because they're going to do better. Um, They'll nag their parents until they get the video. Don't let me down. No, you gotta beat his person. Chandler, do not let no, me no, down. No, no, no. Chandler, take your time. You got all kinds of time. Procrastinate. Um, Gabby, Cole, oh. uh, you and Tyler make a great video. Send it in pronto. Chandler, do it first. No, no, no. Take your time, Chandler. <laughs> so we're just gonna see who wins. Yeah, so yeah. We, we will win. I'm picking Gabby and she's not gonna let me down. Right? So we're gonna like timestamp this thing, right? Yeah, we'll send it out today. All right, um, well, we need to jump into uh, a message from Mr. Matt Klopfelter. Thank you for sending this in. It's a really encouraging one, one that I needed to hear. And then you will lose your first game of the day and hopefully your second one in a little bit. Thank you, Gabby. See ya. Hey, four, five, six kids. This is Mr. Matt. I've missed getting to spend time with you over these last few weeks. So, this has been a unique time. I've been using that word a lot recently. Unique is defined as being the only one of its kind, unlike anything else. I think this time frame definitely fits the definition of unique. You know, I've heard a lot of people complaining about what's going on. There have been times that it's been inconvenient, but this time has also given us the opportunity to do the things that we're usually too busy to do. So what have you been doing during this unique time? Maybe you've been doing the same things you usually do. Maybe, maybe you've been trying to learn something new. I've been playing around with making some bread. I've also started trying to learn Spanish. I'm not going to try that today. So, this unique time has a really great biblical application too. Our world is so full of such busy people. In the Bible, God gave instructions to his followers in the Old Testament in Exodus 20. Most of these words are familiar to the whole world. It's the Ten Commandments. One of those instructions was, remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. That last word is really unique. The word holy means to dedicate something to God for a religious purpose or to make it sacred. See, the Israelites weren't allowed to do anything on the Sabbath or the seventh day of the week. We even see God taking a rest on the seventh day when he created the world. And it's really cool that Jesus talks about this too in Mark 2, 27. Jesus talks about it and he says, The Sabbath day was made to meet the needs of the people, not the people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. So what does that mean for us? We saw that God made the Sabbath to be something special. We saw that he even observed it. We see that Jesus says there, it's there to meet our needs. See, God created us to slow down sometimes. Coronavirus has forced us to slow down. It's become a time where we've been forced to actually interact with the people living in our own house. We have sought out ways of finding new means of connecting. We've had these moments to breathe. So I'm going to repeat a question I asked earlier. What have you been doing during this unique time? I used that word a minute ago to talk about slowing down. Breathe. Paul tells us in the second book of Timothy that all scripture is God-breathed and that it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. See, since the words of God are that are in the Bible, that it comes from God's breath. It's there to teach us. It corrects us when we sin. It convicts us when we're wrong. It shows us how to live an equipped life to do what God places in our path. But for us to do that, we have to know what it says. Maybe out of this forced slowdown, you've, uh, you've had time to get in the Bible. I got talking really fast, didn't I? And I forced myself to, to slow down. Just like sometimes we gotta force ourselves to slow down because we need to be reminded that God wants to fill our hearts and wants to fill our minds with the words that He has breathed out for us to read. And those words are in the Bible. You know, growing up I had a lot of trouble finding a way to get into the Bible, finding ways to connect to it, to plan to have my times to read but you know now with modern technology we've got so many things to help us 
There's apps for our phones and our iPads and our computers. Like the Bible app. It comes from a group called YouVersion. The app is full of tons of great reading plans. That's what I've been doing a lot of my time. I've been in the Bible in the last few weeks. There's even one, it's a set of them called Quarantine Life. And the picture for that set of reading plans has got a roll of toilet paper on it. That kind of is apropos, isn't it? There's also one called Kickstarting a Conversation with God. Maybe you've got a devotion book at home you've been waiting to start. The most important part is that we're spending time in the Bible. We're talking to God. We're taking in the truth of God and we're letting it fill our mind. Don't leave this unique time that God's placed in us unchanged. What influence could you have on the world because you were forced to slow down and you chose to spend some of that slowing down time better developing your relationship with Jesus? Before I finish talking to you, I wanted to pray. I wanted to tell Jesus how thankful I am for you guys. Well, can you just pray with me for just a second? God, thank you. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you have created this unique time. And thank you that you remind us that sometimes we just need to slow down. Thank you that your word is your breath. It is the words that you have spoken through your own mouth or through the mouths and writings of the people whom you inspired. God, thank you that the words that they shared with us 2,000 years ago still mean something to us today. God, we love you and we thank you for the opportunities you have for us to be able to develop better relationships with our own family whom we live in the same doors of. God, I pray right now we also would spend time praying every day to you, thanking you for the things that you've given us, but also helping us to pray for the people around us who need to know who you are. They need to know you have a purpose and you have a plan for them and that in everything you are working everything out for them. That they would be able to see the good plans that you have for them and live in those plans and grow in a relationship to you. Jesus, we love you so much and we thank you for the gift of your son and for the salvation that comes from that. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Guys, I miss you. I can't wait to see you again. But until then, get in the Bible. See what God has to say. It's full of things that are so applicable today and tomorrow, and in the future, and in the future. But we gotta know what it says. I love you guys, I'll see you soon. Bye. All right, Andrew, Coronation, we're gonna play a game. I said it's gonna be a Mother's Day game, and this game is called More or Less Mother's Day Edition. You're simply voting if you think it's more or less to each of these questions. Now, I know that you know, like we honor mothers on Mother's Day. Um, you know that a lot of people buy their mother's flowers, but do you know like what percentage of people buy their mother's flowers? You're gonna find out, let's play our game. More or less, more or less. Okay, if you think, answers more, thumbs up, down. Okay, all right, I got this, we've done this before. Seven in 10 people will celebrate Mother's Day this year. More. More. More, 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 more. Yes. All right. There's one. There's one. 11.9% of Americans aged 23 to 37 still live with their mothers. I think it's more. I think it's more. Come on, more. Two. Oh, guys, y'all are going down. More calls are made on Mother's Day than any other day of the year. 422. Less. Can it be three mores in a row? Less. Three in a row. 89% of Americans buy their mom flowers on Mother's Day. Less. Less, less, less. 
four. The very first Mother's Day was celebrated in 1958 and was signed into law in 1964. Uh, less, like earlier. I don't know, more, less? Yeah, that's what I was going for, earlier. Yep, so I was right. That's five. On average, shoppers spend $176 on gifts for their mothers. Ooh, less. Whoa! Okay, 55 billion will be spent on Mother's Day this year. Less. That's a lot of money. That is a whole bunch of money. Good job. Good job, Andrew. Every Mother's Day, there are approximately 122 million Mother's Day's cards sent. More. I'm on a dang roll. The average American buys 1.8 Mother's Day cards. Many buy cards for grandmothers and sisters. More. Yes, 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 yes. I am, this might be the best I've ever done. The average age for a first time mother in the United States is 24, hmm, less. I think it's less. Ah, uh, 29, almost 30 years old. I lost track, I think, I stopped counting, but I think I got like seven or eight of them right. Maybe more, maybe less. See what I did there? <laughs> but I bet I beat you, Coronacation. Yeah, so we'll see you tomorrow.